Good, thank you. <laughs> tricks. I always start off my examinations by asking if the person can hear me. Uh, sorry, Aaron, you might have to get a little close to the microphone. Yes. <laughs> so you have See to that? be over there. That's okay. the problem. Okay, so you want to be over here? <laughs> there you go. Can you guys hear me now? Oh, yeah. Great. <laughs> um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk today about some reflections on, um, on faith but it's, it's ultimately more of um, sort of a reflection on how faith is part of our Christian life and the working of that out. I've got several passages that I want to read, and I, I'm just going to maybe preface these with just a brief comment and then read it. And so I just would encourage you to just listen to the passage. We're not going to go through line by line but the, the, the idea I'm um, hoping carries through. So the first is a selection from Psalm 25. And to me, this is, um, this, is, this is before Jesus came, but this is a picture of the Christian life, like day by day, moment by moment. And this is what the psalmist says. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed, let not mine enemies triumph over me. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed, let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. Mm -hmm. Show me thy ways, O Lord, teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindnesses, for they have been ever of old. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto see such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. For thy name's sake, O Lord, pardon mine iniquity, for it is great. What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. His soul shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. That's um, so. That's very moment by moment, right? In our lives, that's 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 that calling out and that being there with God, and that's from our perspective, kind of reaching out to Him and affirming and asking forgiveness and seeking His teachings and seeking His blessing on our life. Now, um, I'm going to read from Psalm 139. And this, to me, is more of that, it's the same feeling as that first psalm, except it's more from a sense of, like, it's less affirmative, and he's, it's less that he's calling out, it's more that he's acknowledging in a sort of humble and almost, almost a distraught and despairing way, his small presence before God, who he trusts for his salvation. So Psalm 39, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my path and my laying down and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? Almost as if he wants to, right? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. 
If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee, for thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. <clears throat> and then finally from um, second, or Philippians chapter 2. And this is, this is Paul expounding on how the people that he's about to leave and go to another city, how they're supposed to live, knowing Christ and in the context of their faith. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So <clears throat> that concept of fear and trembling When we consider the meaning of our faith, we often speak about it as sort of a moment of believing in Jesus, a moment of salvation, you know, obviously good news, praise, all the things he's done for us, all of our blessings. And now we're, we're it's, it's almost like now it's all done, right? And there is a sense in which it has been done by him. He's taken care of it for us, our salvation. He said on the cross, it is finished. But when we read the Psalms, when we read Paul's letters, and when we experience our life, we still have that abiding, the way Paul talks about it, is fear and trembling. And I think that it's important for us to bring that mindset onto our daily life and into our, our faith and our, our exercise of faith. It's that like walking with him. It's that crying out to God, <laughs> saying, forgive my transgressions, not just once, right, when we believed in him, not just when we've really done something we regret or whatever, but always and every day. And moreover, it's trusting, as it says in the Psalms, that the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. And that he is showing us his covenant every day, whether it's, as it were, a good day or not a good day. As we fear him, he's showing us his covenant. And he's working on us in our lives every day, right? When he, when he saved us, this, our faith in the Presbyterian church and in the, the Protestant church largely, our faith said that he checked a box in the book, 
right? If you can put it that way. He said, look, you're, you're in Christ. You have his righteousness on him, on you. So it's like a cloak. So when he looks, when God looks at us, he sees that cloak instead of what we are. But as it says in, in Romans, who he justified, he also glorified. So in other words, we don't remain that self. He turns us into Christ's image. But he does it every day in our lives. And he does it through our trials. And he does it through our victories. And he does it through the exercise of our faith. And that's why Paul writes to the Philippian church. And he says, you know, look, look what Jesus did. He, he was God. He thought it not robbery. In other words, nothing's taken from him. He gave it up freely to come down and live with us and humble himself unto death, even death on the cross, right? And that therefore he's going to be exalted and every knee will bow and the tongue confess. And therefore, work out your salvation the way that he did, right? Through fear and trembling. And that not only is a, 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 a picture of what we go through, you know, in a season or in a day or in a certain difficult time or even just in a, you know, when we have a decision or whatever and wrestling with God and lifting up our prayers to him. That's literally what Jesus went through. Fear and trembling, right? That you can consider the, the garden of Gethsemane. We're getting towards Easter here, right? And he's, he's asking for the cup to be taken away from him and he's trembling and he's reaching out and that was part of what he had to do in order to be exalted. And in some ways, that is part of what we have to do in the context of him sanctifying us and glorifying us in the end. And, you know, we, um, we can't avoid it. Whither shall we go from his presence? Where, where, where can we go? We, you know, it's, that's the Psalm 139, and we were reading it. You can go up to the highest hills. You can go across the sea. He even said you can go up to heaven. You can go down to the depths of hell. You can hide in the darkness. It doesn't matter. He is working on us. He is bringing us forward. And we can think we're going to go over here and maybe... That's all fine now, or sort of, well, now, now I can do this. But he's got us. He's beset us behind and before and laid his hand upon us. That, um, that term, fear and trembling, I couldn't go through a brief sermon without talking about my philosophy degree. Um, <laughs> because, uh, you know, again, the, uh, what that was worth is to be able to say at, to people, my favorite philosopher is Soren Kierkegaard, mm. right? Which it is. Soren Kierkegaard was a Danish philosopher who, like any existential Danish philosopher, you imagine he lived in the early 1800s and was sort of sickly and died when he was young, right? <laughs> but he was a man of great faith. He was a man of great faith. And he was a man of great, even as much as he railed against the, uh, the, the, the corruption in the established church of his day, he was an Orthodox believer. He was an Orthodox Protestant, even in the midst of his kind of philosophical, you know, maybe slightly mystical situation. He was an Orthodox believer and, and, a, and a trained theologian and philosopher, and a very interesting guy. But he wrote a book called Fear and Trembling. And this is a section from the introduction. And this is, um, I just kind of want to close with this and maybe a brief other comment And that my, my whole purpose here, because, you know, we, we prayed about the Ukraine this morning. Um, you know, we, we, we just have been through nothing like that, but these storms aren't incredibly fun. And we're all going through our different things in life. And quite honestly, our country, our state, aren't doing too well. I would say they're doing, you know, it's kind of difficult. And I would say the whole world is not doing well. It's 
doing a little bit worse and a little bit worse, as much as God's purposes are always working. So my, my, it was on my heart to, to talk about how we walk through this and to bring us back to that sense of fear and trembling before the Lord, lifting up to him what we do in, in light of what Jesus has done for us and what his, the significance of his being willing is to empty himself come down here and humble himself even unto death for us, that we have that in our daily lives as we carry forward our faith. And so um, Kierkegaard, in a, a similar time in a way, in his time when the institutions were crumbling and there was sort of a glib uh, lack of seriousness and, and um, you know, the, the faith was waning in, 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 in a certain way from his point of view. He wrote this in the introduction to his book, Fear and Trembling. He says, in our time, nobody is content to stop with faith, but wants to go further. It would perhaps be rash to ask where these people are going. But it is surely a sign of breeding and culture for me to assume that everybody has faith. For otherwise, it would be queer for them to be going further. That's where he's a little kind of trite and, and witty. Um, in those old days, it was different. Then faith was a task for a whole lifetime because it was assumed that dexterity in faith is not acquired in a few days or weeks. When the tired oldster drew near to his last hour, having fought the good fight and kept the faith, his heart was still young enough not to have forgotten that fear and trembling which chastened the youth which the man indeed held in check, but which no man quite outgrows. That's brilliant. So, yeah, you know, let's, let's walk through in our faith in this life, and let's remember as we, you know, deal with whatever comes our way, we can't get out of God's purpose for us. We can't get out of his sanctifying work on us and we, like Paul admonishes the Philippians, should continue to work out our salvation through fear and trembling. That's it. Thanks. Amen. Thank you, Aaron.